guys welcome back to another video and in this one i'm going to show you how i remade the new martin garrix track called pressure you can download the flp samples and presets all down below for free and here's a preview of my remake So my mindset going into this lead was that it kind of sounded like a Don Diablo future house lead. So the processing on this lead also makes it very unique to how it would sound. So without any processing, the lead sounds like this. So I really saw this lead as like a dirty future house lead. It doesn't sound necessarily clean, but it sounds really cool. So here's the main lead and it sounds like this. All this is is the Juno wave from the analog section inside of Serum. I put five voices of unison on it, a little bit of detune, and then I had the wave table position on nine over here. And then one of the main sounds is the Ben plus minus. So if we turn this off, you can tell that it's more of like a uh, square wave. But the more we turn it right, it turns into like a square saw. So that was really important for the sound. And the main part of the sound here, besides these amp envelopes over here, is this LFO on the filter. And if we turn the filter off, it just sounds like a detuned saw wave. But with this filter on, and I tried to dial in this LFO here as much as I could to the cutoff. And I also take the BPM off here and put it at 2.2 Hertz. And it sounds like this. So for the effects for the lead, I have a little bit of hyper dimension on here, just giving it some width. I have some, a little bit of tube distortion, not doing too much to the sound. I'll play it without that. Yeah, not doing too much. Then I have some standard compression, not the multiband. And then some EQ and filtering and the fil all the filter is doing is just getting the very, very high end out of there. So I have the, the cutoff all the way to the top. So the next layer of the lead is a noisy lead and that sounds like this. It's just some noise, just a little bit of noise giving it some extra character and it's kind of making it a little dirty too. And my mindset going into this was I didn't want to use normal white noise because that in my opinion would sound too clean. So I tried to make it really dirty and to do that I put this linear full distortion with the drive all the way up and the mix all the way up as well. And if I turn this off you'll hear it sounds just like the original lead. It's just like a variation of that lead, but the sound itself doesn't matter because we're just distorting it so much. So, and to get the, the uh, kind of amp envelope, the same sound as the first one, I shaped the volume of the whole sound in the uh, matrix section. So if we go to LF, if you go to LFO one for your source, then in your destination, go to amp global, then go to amp in the global. We dot, you can take it back just a little bit here and we, shape the LFO just like the first one here. So you guys can see the LFO is exactly the same. It's just a little further down because it got a little too loud, but this is acting just as a dirty lead on top of it. So it really complements it well. It's just giving it a little more character. So for the last bar there, I use Flex inside of FL Studio, and then I use the Essential Winds library, and I just play some of these sounds together. So going into the lead processing, I threw an RC20 on top, and this is kind of just making it really dirty and giving it a vibe. So down here, I love this section down here. We can make it darker, make it a little more wider because the wide is super, super wide. The lead is super wide, sorry. And then I kind of dialed in these to how I felt like it sounded. So if we turn that off, it's kind of taming down that white noise a little bit, but just adding a little more character as well. After that, just some EQ, just a little dips and boosts here and there, nothing too crazy. And also just dipping the mids a little bit here and going back up with the highs. Then I have some seam effects, just doing a little bit of down sampling, bit crutching, nothing too crazy there. And then OTT, just boosting the highs, just even more boosting the highs because we want to, we want to get the highs back a little bit. And then I have an EQ just for volume right here. So that's not doing too much. Then I have a few more plugins on the lead bus itself. Just a little more adding and dipping, nothing crazy. Then I have this MSED plugin, which is boosting the side gains. This is a free plugin, by the way. So if you don't have it, definitely give it a try. And what, what it's doing is it's boosting the side. So if I were to turn up, you can really hear the side information. And it's also great for turning down mid information too. 
So definitely check that out. After that, I have delay and reverb automating inside of the song. You guys can see right here, just on this note right here, just on these two notes. And one of the main key points here is that I automated the input of the delay. So if I were to drag this back, we would get we would get all of these notes too. We don't want that. All we want are these two notes right here. So next we can talk about the bass and that sounds like this. So for the bass layers, I have four different basses kind of all acting as their own kind. They all kind of mesh together and they really glue together very well. So instead of having one layer here, I tried to have a few layers doing a little little bit different uh, different things. So if we dive into here, I'll show you why and how I made all of these. These are all pretty much the same preset from this one. It's all a square wave with an LFO on the fine pitch here. So, and I have four voices of unison on here, just a square wave. I have it filtered down here as well just to 122 hertz on the MG low 18 setting. And then I also have an LFO on the fine pitch. So this is giving it that vibrato effect. So if I turn this off, if I bypass this, it kind of sounds just like a, squ a square wave because it is. If we activate it, it's giving us that vibrato, vibrato effect. And I think that's really great for a sound and that's what the original did as well. Processing on this, I have just some hyper dimension, some zero square distortion, and then a filter rounding out that distortion because that distortion added a lot of high end. <laughs> Sorry for your ears there, but this is taming the high end even more. So this mid bass right here is exactly like the first one. It, there's just a little bit more vibrato in the effects. I have just some hyper on it, some distortion, and then a low cut on the EQ. And the reason I made another preset here is because I felt like it wasn't cutting through the mix on this mid bass preset because the filter, the filtering is a little different. So if I were to go in here and also jump to octaves too, so that's really important and that can really change the sound. So if I go to G5 here and I go to the actual preset, you can tell it's a little different and I felt like that fit the mix a lot better. Next is this bass going up and that sounds like this. So all this is, is a really dirty square wave here. We have LFO one on the fine pitch, and then I have the BPM off at 23.1 Hertz. And I have this filtered as well with some distortion, a little bit of tube distortion, not doing anything too crazy here. So for the sub bass, I just have it one octave down here with three voices of unison filtered down. This is honestly nothing too crazy. So all together, the basses sound like this. <laughs> Now I wanna talk about the processing on these bases. Real quickly, if we go to here, uh, I just have some EQ here doing nothing. And then I have some RC20 once again, giving it some character and with these knobs down here. So making it a little more mono down here and just giving some distortion to those mids. And then after that, just some more EQ, getting those lows out of there. And then I have another Pro Q dipping those mid frequencies because they got a little low, low mid frequencies because it got very built up very build up after that the base the main the main thing for this base is this decapitator and this is giving it so much character so if i play it to you without it doesn't sound nearly as good as this this is giving it that really dirty crunchiness when those higher notes hit and i have it on the e setting here at three and a half drive the drums are only just a simple kick clap and a hi-hat And I didn't do any more processing on these. I also have this laser effect here. And then on the vocals, I have the pressure here. Pressure. I just ripped that from the end of the song. And then on the second one, pressure. this is really cool. So he really put this back in the mix more. So we have some more reverb on it, pushing it back in the mix. We have an EQ here, making it in the old telephone or radio setting. And then after that, we have some delay because you guys can really hear that delay after that. So once again, the whole drop sounds like this. Pressure. One more thing I forgot to mention on the leads is I have a reverse lead going into here. And it's a one octave higher of what it is really playing. So it's playing this G6 note. So to make this, all I did was put a bunch of reverb on that note, export that out, reverse it right here. So when I before I reversed it, sounds like that. And then I just reversed it right here. 
So guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this. There's a lot of cool, there's a lot of cool elements in this song. So go download the FLP samples and presets. And I hope you guys have an amazing day.